Hey everyone, today we're going to run through a new technique that brings a lot of extra detail using only a single node, and I have a couple of tips and tricks. Also, feel free to hit the join button to add your name to the trophy shelf. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so today we're going to talk about a new technique that came out pretty recently called Attention CFG. Basically, it's a new technique that lets you analyze your current image and uses that image's information to emphasize itself. So you don't actually have to provide any additional information to it. You don't have to do anything really special other than hooking it up, and it'll automatically start to uh, give you that additional detail that you're looking for. So as you can see in the example here, uh, we basically have uh, a smiling woman, you know, holding a hot chocolate mug, et cetera, et cetera. And I have a few different examples here, but I essentially want to just show you what this new node does. It's a foundational node, uh, so you don't have to download anything special, and it's called self-attention guidance. And if you don't have this node, just make sure to update your Comfy UI overall implementation using the Comfy Manager, and you'll have this node. And it's a very, very simple node. There's basically two parameters here and an input model and then the uh, output of that model. And so you may wonder, well, what's the numbers that I have to provide here? I'll show you actually what it looks like with different settings. So it kind of gives you a feel for it. But really, you can provide uh, whatever level makes sense for you for that image. Uh, and in terms of what you actually put into it, so you're going to pipe in. I'm using the Use Everywhere node in this case. Um, you're piping in your normal model, right? Your normal checkpoint. You're providing the values. Of course, you can turn these into inputs as well. And then you're outputting this, and this is then going directly into your sampler. So it's a very simple sort of uh, update here. And additionally, if you have, let's say, IP adapter, or if you have LoRa's or other sorts of uh, enhancers, you just chain them into uh, this overall chain. And then, of course, the end result is you want to uh, put it into your sampler. And so once you've done that, uh, that's it, right? Then your outputted image has all that extra detail. Also, please feel free to share and like and subscribe. Now, one thing to keep in mind, uh, because this node is doing kind of a self-introspection, a self-assessment of the image that you're going to be creating, and it's going to be enhancing it, it does take a little bit of extra time to your overall render. So you may want to put this uh, into a group for a t additional detail or something. You may not want to run it all the time. Now, is it significant amounts of time, right? Are you going from seconds to minutes? No. Um, but I did find, for example, for a lightning model, typically a, you know, two second render now it becomes about four seconds, you know, a non lightning model, maybe three or three and a half seconds. And now is about five. So it does add a, you know, percentage wise, a uh, significant amount of time. Uh, so if you have a lot of renders going through, right, you may want to first kind of render without your self-attention guidance first, and then coming back and adding that additional detail, maybe adding your upscale models and, you know, kind of maybe put it in that section of your workflow. However, it is a very cool node and it's only one node. So once you plug it in, you see the imagery right away. Okay. So with that being said, so what did I do here? So I wanted to show kind of what it looks like for different settings. So you can see each one of these guys. I have, you know, 0.5 here. I'm first doing kind of like the scale setting first. So 0.5, 1, 2, 4. And then down here, I kept the scale the same, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. But I changed the blur sigma, right? And basically, the blur sigma is how much of that, uh, of the blurriness of the image uh, is it going to maybe affect or not affect. So you'll see... Uh, some of the uh, changes there as well. So once that's done, uh, we are brought into a grid here. I basically piped all those images. And of course, I added our you know meme templates so we can have the settings there as well. And we pipe them into an image batch and then to pipe that into an image panel, a grid panel, to then have our overall uh, sort of view. And you can see right away, <laughs> this one in the middle is the worst, of course, really, really terrible quality. Um, this scale is way too high, and then, of course, not enough blur, uh, and so that's obviously not a good, good option. But you can see 
a lot of these are really good options. And you can also see some interesting things come about when you uh, change the uh, scale to the right level and blur the right level. You can see, you know, some, sometimes there's a little bit of highlight here, um, which may be an effect you want, uh, depending on your imagery. Um, many times, if you, again, go too heavy, uh, you can see the effect there. But essentially, you can see there are some really good settings here that look really natural. And you're like, well, this is great, but what does my original image look like? So if I come back to all the settings I set up, right, I actually did set up the control model, right? So you can see the control versus the additional one. Uh, and so, of course, uh, we want to then be able to compare. So here's the cool little tip and trick. So remember the use everywhere. We have a couple of videos around how to beam the information, uh, you know, back and forth between different nodes, etc. I could name the input uh, very simply, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. for each of these use cases. And I just simply take my image comparer node, which I usually use to like go scan back and forth, and I change the input names to that same use everywhere title. So essentially, I don't have to do anything special to rewire new images I want to compare. I just have to rename the image uh, input. So in this case, I said use use case three and re-render. It's done. If I say use uh, you know use case number one and re-render, it's done, right? And I obviously at the bottom I could see, right? I have the different setting here. Um, but you can see also one of the things I really like about this attention node is that sometimes you, the common issue that we see with some of the SDXL renders where people have three fingers, uh, this will actually fix a lot of the times, fix the, the finger issues. So in this case, I have four and four, so I'm okay. But uh, definitely something to check out as well because that's a very quick fix uh, for that effort. And as you can see, uh, I found to be most effective to have a a very small scale and blur uh, sigma setting. Uh, it doesn't then look overblown, but even if you look in the background, right, it's keeping the background elements pretty well. It's just refining it a little bit. So it's really allowing the image to, to pop, uh, especially, you know, around facial uh, details as well. And that's basically it. So this is a really cool technique. I hope this was helpful and we'll see you again soon.